Hi, Angela Wolf here, fashion designer and online instructor. And in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make a sports bra, but how to do the strappy back. Kind of cute and trendy. All right, so I have my stretch fabric and I just wanna show you on the pattern. This, I'm just using a regular t-shirt pattern, how I transform that into a sports bra. So I marked just above my waist area and that's where I cut this fabric. I'll, for a sports bra, you would add a band down here, but for now, we're just making the top. You can see how I cut in, I lowered the armhole by about an inch and cut in about an inch and a half. I cut this away. So I'm just giving you a visual here so you can do this on your pattern as well. And for the front, I did the same thing. I cut back the neckline and I kept the neck the same. So this is what we're starting with. So for the front area, it depends if you want to add bra cups or something like that to your sports bra. So I have one piece cut out of, this is a four way stretch knit. And then I also have a mesh, and this mesh has a stretch. It's actually only a two-way stretch, but it does stretch both ways just a little bit. So I've already sewed these together. And I wanna show you something, what I did to the mesh. See this, these curves right here? Now, why would I do that? Well, when I sew my side seams together, it'll leave a little area here if I decide that I want to add any form of cup into the, into the sports bra. Now, if I decide that I want something this big, you can see from the front, it'll give a little bit of push up. <laughs> if I want that, then I'll add two layers of mesh and on the mesh only, I will stitch one layer of straight stitch just on the mesh and then attach it the exact same way. And that will make sure that each side of the cups don't cross over, they'll both stay to their own side. So that's all you have to do for the front part. Very simple to do. I really didn't think you needed to watch me do that. The straps are a little trickier and I thought I'd focus on that. So the front is finished. This is just a basting stitch that I ran to keep the mesh attached to the wrong side of the front. So I'm gonna set that to the side. Now let's focus on the back. So first of all, I'm gonna show you a quick easy way to make spaghetti straps out of knit. Let's go to the serger. You could also do this with a sewing machine if you don't have a serger, but this is just an easy way if you do have a serger. So you're gonna stitch a chain longer than the area that you're flipping. I'm just doing a small one here. I've already, <laughs> I already stitched a whole pile of these for you for this episode. So you're gonna fold that into the fold, the thread. There you go. And we are stitching with right sides together right now. Stitch to the end. And I'm only cutting off the thread that I stitched, not the first one. And then you just gently pull. It just takes a little bit to get it started. And voila. And if you need to see that again, I'll be showing this in another episode when we work on jogger, jogging pants. All right, so back up here, here are my spaghetti straps. If I open this top up, and the reason I'm leaving a lot of this flat, first of all, it's easier for you to see. So here is my back section, and I always like to keep my piece and my pattern available because if you're using a thinner fabric, you wanna make sure it doesn't get skewed when we go to attach those straps. So the first thing you have to do before you can even attach those straps is you would sew in the back ribbing. And you can see right here, this is the ribbing I'm talking about. Now I, you would actually sew together your shoulders and do the ribbing all the way around the entire top. You don't need to see all that. So I'm just gonna attach ribbing just to this backside to show you how this looks. So let's go, actually here's a piece Let's use this one. I've already taken this, I've already pressed it in half. I like to press my ribbing in half. It just, this fabric can get so wiggly when you're sewing. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word, wiggly. But it does get a little screwy when you're doing this. So, here's my ribbing and let's go back to the serger. So this is the right side of the garment. And I'm just gonna start stitching. And let me show you a little trick. I'm starting at the shoulder seam here. From this upper shoulder area, I'm just gonna lay the ribbing right on top. I'm not stretching this ribbing right at this point. It's one to one equal. Go ahead and stitch. And when we start to go around the curve, then I, sti I stretch the ribbing just slightly. 
now we're at the bottom of the curve. This part can really get stretched out on your body. So now you're gonna stretch even just a little bit more. What you're doing is you're making sure it doesn't flip open. And now down around the bottom curve, this is where it can really get stretched out. Now remember, even when you take this off the serger, if it looks like it's puckering a little bit, as soon as you put it on your body, it's gonna stretch right back out. You'd rather have it too tight than to bag open. All right, and around to the other side, and now we're getting to the shoulder area where we're not gonna stretch at all. I'm just gonna search that off. And let's go back up here and see what this looks like. Not bad at all. I'm just gonna give it a quick pressing because now we're going to attach the straps. And I like to attach the straps by basting them in place first to make sure they look okay. And then we're going to top stitch. Now I do notice one thing, but of course we're live, so I would expect nothing less. But I notice that parts of the ribbing might be a little thinner than the other. What I would do here, just to point out a little bit, see how this is a little thinner? I would go back and stitch this entire ribbing so it's all that thick. But for now, we're gonna leave it. But just for the record, I noticed that's a little smaller. <laughs> and I wouldn't want it that way on my top. All right, so what I want to do is I'm gonna line this up with my top, and I have this part here. I wanna make sure that nothing is stretched out or skewed. And it looks fine. So now we need to figure out where we want our straps to go. I cut mine a little bit longer. And you can see on the back up here how I did it. I kinda did a weave. So that's what I'm gonna show you here. Here. And let's go to here. You can get carried away with this. There's a lot of fun things you could do on this. I've seen some tops where they keep this part of the top on and then you can have straps going out. So it's just, I don't know, kind of fun. So let to weave, I'm gonna go up and down like this. And for this one, let's do the opposite. Up and down. Get the idea? Now, if you really want to be particular that these are even, you could lay this on a grid that you usually, you know, rotary cut around, and then you could make sure that all of these line up on the inch marks. So I'm going to grab my pins, and I'm just going to pin these in place to the wrong side. Let's see, let's just lift and lower that, just like that. Now I'm pinning from the right side right now, but when we get to the sewing machine, I'm going to take these pins out, so don't worry. And we'll go a few more. Now remember, this could be for a sports bra or a tank top, which I'll be showing you in the next episode how to turn this into a tank instead of a sports bra. All right, so there we go. Let's go to the sewing machine. You just want to make sure that everything lays nice and tight. You don't want anything bagging because that's how it's going to look on your body. So from the wrong side, this is where so it gets a little tricky. I'll try to do this slowly and keep my hands out of the way. You want to stitch this right into your seam allowance. So I'm going to hold this in place. I'll start right here. Take my pin out and flip back my seam allowance, just like that. It's on an angle, and it's supposed to be, because remember, you pinned it in place. Actually, I'm going to put a pin there because I need to get my hand out of the way for you. I, if I was sewing by myself without you watching, I would just sew it, but you'll never see past my hand. All right, I just have it on a straight stitch right now, 2.5 stitch length, go back and forth. Now these, the knit usually will not fray. So then I'll just trim that off. I could run it back through the serger, but once I finish this edge, you'll see it's gonna go away anyways. You're hardly gonna see it. But if you really are particular, when we're all finished, you can run that back through a serger. All right, here's another one. I'm just holding it in place, let's flip it back. trying to hold it and flip, and then I'm just gonna pin it and get it out of place. You, you can see again, it's not straight across, it's at an angle. And I don't know if I mentioned it, on the serger, I was using a four thread overlock, just for some extra strength. These straps, depending on how tight they are on your body. You might have seen these on a bathing suit, that'd be a great idea for this as well. All right, there we go. We'll do one more. 
go, like that. All right, and one more. Okay, so let me just show you this and then I wanna show you how to finish that edge. Trim that off. All right, so we have three sewn in place right here and you cannot see it from the right side, right? Because we attached it to the seam allowance. So you could go back through if you decided you wanted to top stitch those, feel free. But I'm going to show you what I did then. After this, you'll finish all of those. You sew together your entire top and now you're gonna use a decorative stitch or a cover stitch. On mine, I believe I used a cover stitch. And I'm just gonna use a triple stitch right now, set to a stitch length of 3.5 or 4.0, whichever one you prefer. I'm using contrasting thread so you can see it. You'll see me use the triple stitch quite a bit throughout this season. It's a great stitch on stretch fabrics. All right, and I'm just gonna get around this end here. And what this is doing is this is holding your seam allowance in place. So when you go to put this top on, these will stay in place and when they stretch. So let's go back up here and I'll show you this. Give it a little pressing. If you're pressing a knit, be sure that you use a press cloth. You don't wanna get little triangles on it. So here's the back. You can see that this is all finished. So once this is stretched on your body, let's go back up here. See how this will hold your seam allowance in place? It'll hold your straps in place. For a sports bra, you would just add a band. In the next episode, I'm gonna show you how to turn it into a tank. <laughs>